Welcome to Weld.com. I need to do some demos here. We've got an ESOB Rebel 235. This thing has full capability of all the, way, all the stuff with 035. It runs dual voltage, so it runs 220 volt and 110 volt input. <clears throat> but one of the cool features of this thing is uh, it's stout enough to run 045. I have not run 045 on this machine yet, so the first thing I want to do is check out this SMIG program and I've got 045 wire in here. I'm all, I've got everything set up. I should be at 250 inches a minute. Now on this particular machine, the way I understand it is when you go to SMIG, you set your material thickness and then you can choose your wire feed speed. And I believe um, it, it goes in increments of 10. Let me check that out. I don't want to give you inaccurate information. Yes, it goes in increments of 10. So the first setting is, it's still 3 sixteenths and I'm at 220 inches a minute. 3 sixteenths at 230, 240, and 250. Well, I just want to go 250. I want to make a, a, a fillet weld here. There is one other feature here on SMIG and it's given me two profiles of a fillet weld. And it's, I have a scale set dead in the middle. And on the left side, it is a concave, or I'm sorry, a convex fillet weld. And on the right side of this scale is a concave fillet weld, which is gonna tell me that the, if I turn it to the right, it's gonna get a little hotter in volts and stuff. So there's some fine tuning to go on. So <clears throat> I, wanna, I wanna tack these up. I have cleaned some 3 16 um, flat plate here, two inches wide. I just wanna, I'm gonna tack these together. I'm gonna weld both sides. I'll probably cool things off to try to keep things um, in perspective here instead of overheating and then going and saying, oh, that worked so much better. I'm not gonna do that to you. Now, one thing I do, I wanna mention here, these are kind of rusty. They've been sitting for a long time. <clears throat> and while I'm cleaning these off, I'm thinking, you know, it doesn't matter if they're rusty or if they were brand new strips. If I just got this material delivered today, it'd still have mill scale and I really should still clean it off. So I got to thinking about that. Isn't that a brilliant idea just for you? Anyway, I like to clean stuff when I'm, when I'm doing. I don't like uh, MIG welding over rust and mill scale. Even if it was brand new material, it looked clean and it, it gray color, you know, it still has the mill scale on there and that does affect your weld properties, weld pool properties. Definitely don't want to weld over the top of mill scale on TIG welding. With stick, a lot of times you can drive right through it with your 6010, 7010, 6011 electrodes. Some of them, you know, so you turn it up 10 amps, blast right through it, no big deal. Let me get my hood on, I'll be right back. I tacked your plates up for you and when I got started, I didn't think I, I thought I did something totally wrong on setting this machine up. And then I realized you need to weld for a little bit so the machine will learn, learn some styles. I did drop this, what did I say, 250 when on the 3 16th part. I dropped it down to 220 inches a minute wire feed speed. And then I went two clicks to the right over into the higher voltage concave setting onto this particular uh, fillet weld icon thing here. So I did pull the trigger. I made a little bit of a test weld on the back side and it ran so much better. So uh, I'm going to make this fillet weld across here. Now, you know, we're talking about running 045 wire. Why would you do that? It's the last size wire that you can actually short arc with control. And we are running short arc uh, sequence here. It's pushing globular kind of right on that edge. We're still running 75% argon, 25% CO2. Could we change gas and switch this machine all up and put 95.5 or 98.2 or something on here? Could we spray with it? Sure, we're gonna try it. We're gonna push this thing hard and see what it'll do here after a while. Another, another video, but um, anyway, let's, uh, let's pull the trigger and see what this sounds like and see what it does. I'm gonna do just a slight stitch. I'll be welding toward the other camera here, so here we go. Wow, that's pretty smooth. Is 
I'm going to speed up and quit doing the stitch. I see some advantages to that. I really do. <clears throat> you know, if I was fabricating and I was using a mixture of thicknesses of metal, I, I, I still wouldn't, I wouldn't be scared to weld eighth inch with this and go faster. But I can see some real advantage here. If you look at the profile of this weld, um, you know, it's almost oversized. Yeah, we could go probably, we could adjust travel speed and go faster, but you know, for strength, if I was doing one-sided fillets, I'd lay that down all day and be real comfortable with it. I was watching it go in. It had good wetting into the toe of the weld. Um, over here where I said I was gonna quit stitching, and I did, and I just kinda did the normal thing. It still has a deep V ripple pattern. So, to me, what it sounded like is it had nice inductance. It had good wetting properties. I've run a lot of different welding machines over the years and I've seen a lot of different art features. You just have to notice them after a while. And what I'm seeing with these uh, with these Rebels, you know, now it's going to sound like an infomercial and I'm sorry, but we have to talk about these features. This is this is a good machine. I mean, this thing is tight. It'll run. It's responsive to adjustments. I don't think I mean, we have our normal silicone deposits across here. But they're rare. They're spread out quite a bit. I see one there, two, three. That's a dingleberry, a little chunk. Yeah, that's hot. I just found that hot plate. I've got like six or seven chunks of, uh, of silicone deposit on there of glass. The rest of it's all clean. <coughs> Excuse me. So I think this is a good, good process. We'll, uh, we'll do another one here in just a second, and we'll cheat it to the other side, see if we get a different... Uh, totally different bead profile. Be right back. I'll switch things up slightly. Um, I mean, you should notice a difference here, but, and I, I'll still have some other things to test here, but 220 uh, and a couple of clicks toward the concave side over here on this well. This one I've turned it over to 230 inches a minute, and I went three or four clicks over to the left, which tells me it's going to round up. It's either going to decrease voltage slightly. It should round this fillet weld up a little bit. What I expect maybe to happen is the machine has to read what's going on first. It may pop at the very first of the weld uh, again until it starts learning what's going on with the, with the way I'm welding here. So let me pull the trigger and see what happens. Guess what happened? This weld rounded up just like the icon said. It did put down more stuff. It, it reacted okay. I personally don't like it. I mean, I, I, I like the first one we did. I thought the profile was better. So what I'm gonna do on the back side of this particular weld, since this is crowned up, it's got a little peak to it. Again, I'm, I'm real impressed at how clean this is as far as deposits. I know I cleaned the material, but still, we've done short arc welds and it's pulled all the, the glass that it deposits in the middle of the ripple pattern. This is like doesn't have anything on it. You heard it pop and yeah, it left a little kind of a, a wire sitting here. It's kind of a weird bump at the first, very first of the weld. I don't expect that to happen on the other side. I think what I want to do now is I want to go ahead and turn it up in wire feed speed to 240. Let's just go 250. Let's go up to 250 and we'll go back to, oh, what do you say? Three clicks to the right, which should lay this down. This should be a lot hotter weld. This should be a lot wetter, sounds smoother. But again, I want to travel faster.
Let me tell you exactly what happened down here at the end. That's good old arc blow right there for you. <clears throat> a little magnetism down here. It's like the wire just didn't want to get out there. Created a little heavy popping going on. I could, uh, I could correct that by putting my ground up here on the part or somewhere up here on the table. Right now my ground is below the machine over here opposite me. So, hey, we all do that. You know, a lot of times when we ground apart, we just ground it. Fillet welds, pretty much notorious for it, for what I've seen over the years. Some groove welds are like that too, but in any event, this was a lot faster. This is, this is just what we thought it was gonna be. Um, it did lay a little flatter. It was laying down a lot more material. Again, we turned it up to 250 inches a minute. So, I'm, I, you know, I like this. I, I'm thinking for a fabricator or a shop setting. I know this machine is, it's light enough you can carry it out in the field. You can go do field work with it. You know, we can do stick. If we need to, we can do MIG and flux core out in the field. We can do shop settings. I'm, I, just, I just see all kinds of cool stuff going on with the machine. It's not heavy. You can pick it up, move it around. It handles the full spool of wire, the big spools. So we're going to make some adjustments, probably change gas, run some other videos here. I, you know, there's a lot of stuff to do here. I don't want to say that to, to have you think that the machine is real complicated to run. It isn't. It's, it's real simple to run but there's just so many things that you can do. It's versatile and it's, it's real easy to set up. Going through it once or twice would be the cool thing to do, which is what we're doing. We're, we're teaching ourselves here. So this was 045 wire on SMIG, okay? And I've not, you know, SMIG just came around for me. I've, I, I've never used it, so I think it's cool. I think, it, I think it's very beneficial to some people to, to be able to use this program. Uh, to me, I still like the old school, set my own volt, set my own wire feed speed. So I guess I'm stubborn like that. I hope this helped. I'm, I'm having some fun with this, the good machine. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the videos. New, mid, new videos come out every Monday. Bob Moffat with Weld.com. Thank you. You ready, camera guy? Yes, sir. Let's do it. Whew. Yeah. Kafilta plate.